everyone, it's Stacey. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this super cute summer tote bag. Now it's extra sturdy. We've got a nice flat bottom here and we also have pockets inside. I'm super happy with it and I'll be thrilled to bits if you make one too. So let me show you how I made it. To make the summer tote bag, you'll need half a yard canvas for the outer bag. 5 6 of a yard, 100% cotton for the lining, half a yard or one yard of fusible interfacing Palon Shape Flex SF101 and this is optional, two yards of cotton webbing for the straps. So give all your fabric a good press and then for the outer fabric we'll cut two pieces at 21 by 18 inches and if you bought half a yard that will work perfectly with directional fabric. Then you need to cut one pocket and that needs to be 21 inches by 10 inches and I've cut that with the lining fabric and again with the lining fabric we need to cut two pieces at 21 inches by 18 inches and if you're choosing to use Palon Shape Flex SF101 you need to cut either two or four pieces at 21 inches by 18 inches now all the Shape Flex will do is give it more body and structure. So you might like to use it on your outer fabric, your lining, both or neither. That's entirely up to you. Today I'm going to be using it on my lining fabric. So first off, let's start with preparing our pocket. So now I've got my pocket here. If your fabric has a wrong side, then make sure that side is facing up towards you. And then all we're going to do is along this longer edge here, we're going to fold it over about half an inch. I'm just going to do it by eye and give it a little finger press. You might like to use a tape measure. Just give a little finger press and then I'm just going to press that down. And then all I'm going to do is fold it over again giving it another finger press and then I'll press that again then I'm just going to pop in some pins just to keep it in place when we're sewing it I'm just going to turn it around so now I'm just going to pop in a few pins so that it stays in place because we're just going to sew a top stitch along this edge okay let's do our first bit of sewing so now i'm just using gudeman thread which is what i like to use when i'm just doing general sewing i'm going to stitch at stitch length 2.5 and all I'm going to do is do a top stitch. So I'm going to stitch as close as I can to this folded over edge here. I'm not going to worry about a back stitch because this is purely decorative to hide that raw edge. So I'm just going to stitch right off the edge and then trim the threads, trim it at the beginning as well so we're staying nice and tidy as we go and you can see I've just stitched very close to the edge just to hold that fold down. So I've got my Palon Shape Flex SF101 here and what we're going to do is iron on each of the pieces to my lining. Now you might not want to do Shape Flex or you might want to do it to your outer as well, or both or none at all. It's entirely up to you. Today I'm just doing my lining. So I've got my shape flex here. I've got the glue or the rough side facing up. I'm going to smooth it out the best I can. Then I'm going to take a piece of my lining and pop it on top with the right side facing me. And then I'm just going to line up all those edges. Now it doesn't quite fit on my ironing board so I'll have to do the top part and then the bottom part and I just want to make sure that none of it's peeking out. If anything you might want to cut your shape flex just a smidgen smaller so it's definitely not coming out because we don't want the glue on our iron. You could also use a cloth, put a cloth over the top to protect it. I have turned my iron down to the wool setting 
and we do have the steam on because it needs the, the damp heat and we need to press it for about 10 seconds in each place and then we just slowly move down so just take your time otherwise it won't adhere properly so just take your time and move down slowly and repeat this until you've done the whole piece of lining Okay, so once it's done, you can just turn it over and check that you're happy with it. You shouldn't really have any air bubbles in it. I'm just going to give those a little press to get them out. And then repeat this for the other piece, or if you're doing your outer, also do your outer fabric. Okay, and then let's move on to the next step. So now I've got my lining with the right side facing me. You can see I've got my shape flex facing down. I'm just going to take my pocket and line that up on the sides and at the bottom so all those edges are lined up nicely and I'm facing that with the right sides up now. If you've got fabric that has a good side that will now be facing you and that seam we did is now facing inside because that will be our pocket. When you're happy that's all lined up nicely. Then we're going to take our second piece of lining and we're going to place that on top with the right sides facing down. And then we're going to make sure all those edges are lined up really nicely. And then once we're happy, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a three inch square on both of the corners. So starting in this corner, I'm just going to measure three inches. This square rule is actually three and a half inches, so I just have to be careful. So if I count, one, two, three, that's correct, it is three inches, so just be sure you're cutting it at the right amount. So it's three inches on each corner, and I'll do the same on this corner. Well, making sure I am in fact doing three inches. You're not going to see any of these working, so don't worry about leaving a mark. Then I'm just going to take my dressmaking scissors and carefully lift it up and cut these corners off. We want all the layers to stay in place, so just be careful. Gosh, my scissors weren't very sharp. And then I'm going to come to the other corner and do exactly the same, making sure I don't accidentally move any of these pieces. Okay, and then once we've done that, we're just going to pull this top piece off and just come back and finish off our pocket. So I'm just going to take a chalk pencil and I'm just going to draw a line from the edge that we've cut here all the way along here and we're just going to sew there to keep our pocket secure and so it's going to sit really nice once we've sewn it together. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Making sure it's nice and straight by lining up an edge of the fabric on a line on my ruler. Again on this side. And then I'm just going to draw as many lines as I'd like pockets. So these pockets here will be super small. In fact, you might not even use them because they're on the side. You might like to have one nice sort of smaller one that's perfect for a phone. And then I'll just use the whole width of my ruler and you know it's straight because if you've you can line up the edge of the fabric on a line on your ruler and I'll just draw another line it doesn't really matter where these lines are you might like to do them quite small and put pencils or pens in them just whatever you like and then I will just pop in a few pins to keep it in place 
and sew along all the lines that we just drew. I didn't pop the pins in earlier because they would have got in the way when we were drawing our lines. Okay, so first I'll start off with this bottom line. So now I'm just going to follow the lines. They are very light, but I can just ever so faintly see them. I'm not going to worry about a back stitch for this bottom one. Okay, and then just trimming the threads. And now I'm going to sew along all the lines that I drew going this way. But when I start, I will start at the top and I will do a back stitch. So I'll stitch down about three or four stitches, reverse all the way back up to the beginning and then carry on again. Because it's a pocket and we want it to be nice and strong, if things get put in there, it will sort of pull at it a little bit. And I will just do a back stitch at the bottom just to make them extra strong. Okay, and then trimming our thread again. Finding the next line and then carrying on until I've sewn all my pockets. And then when I'm coming up to my line, that's going to be the end of my pocket. So I will just stop there. Like I said, I'll do a back stitch and then carry on back down just so they're super strong. Okay, once you're finished, let's take all those pins out. So now I've got my one piece of lining that I just sewed the pockets onto. I'm going to take the second piece again and then I'm going to face them right sides together, line up all those edges, including the squares that we cut earlier. And once that's all lined up nicely, I'm going to pop pins in along this edge and the two sides and we're going to sew along those edges. Now you can use as many or as little pins as you like. But remembering it does help keep everything in place nicely. Okay, so once we've pinned, all we're going to do is sew along both sides and this bottom piece. We're not worrying about the corner that we cut out just yet. So now I'm going to sew along those edges with a half an inch to a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I've just worked out the best guide for me so you might just want to check that first. I'm still stitching at stitch length 2.5 and I will just do a back stitch so it's nice and strong. We want our bags to be extra sturdy. When I come down to the end again, I'll do a back stitch. Trim the threads and do the same for the other two sides. Okay, so let's remove those pins and give it a quick press. So now we're just going to press these seams open. So I'm just going to press them open on this side, then we'll flip it over and do it on the other side. You can just give it a little finger press to make sure they're sitting nicely. And I'll just flip it over and do the same on this side. OK, 
Okay, let's move on to the next step. So now for each of the corners, I'm just gonna come up to them and open them up. And then what I'm going to do is line up the two seams. So lining up those seams and creating one nice straight line. And when I'm happy that they look like they're all matched up nicely, I'm just gonna fold them back down, make sure these edges are also lined up. And then I will pop a few pins in just to keep them in place. We also want it lined up right to the very end. So line that up nicely and pop a pin in just so it stays there. And on this side as well. And then I'll do the same to the other side. Let's just stitch those two ends closed. So everything's just the same as before, same as seam allowance, and I'm also going to do a back stitch to make it really nice and secure. threads while I'm here and then do exactly the same on the other side oh I can see that I've pinned that down I don't want it like that so I'm just gonna lift that remove the pin and make it so that it is being sewed open because we don't want it oh, to be too bulky we want it to be sitting really nicely So now we've finished our lining and we've got our pocket inside. Let's just set that aside and work on our outer. So now we're going to make the outer part of our bag and I am using directional fabric so I'm just going to make sure it's facing the right way and both pieces are. And all we're going to do is exactly the same process as we did for the inner except we're not worrying about a pocket. Of course you could add a pocket to the front if you wanted to. So all I'm going to do is face them right sides together, making sure the fabric is facing in the right direction if you're using directional fabric. And then we're going to do everything we did last time. I'm going to draw and cut three inch squares on both of the bottom corners. Then I'll pin it, sew it, and then press it open and then I'll sew the corners closed again. So just repeat exactly the same process minus the pockets that we did for the inner. making the outer part of our bag I'm just going to turn it right sides out and get it sitting all nicely and then what we want to do is come up to the top here and find those two seams open them out getting them to sit really nicely on either side and then smoothing it out on the top here because now we're about to attach our straps. So get that top part sitting really nicely and then what we're going to do is we're going to measure four and a half inches from the edge of the bag towards the center and that's where we'll attach our first strap and this ruler just happens to be exactly four and a half inches so I'll just make a mark there and then I'm going to come over and do exactly the same on this side. So right on that edge, my ruler's four and a half inches, just making a little mark on that side. 
and then we'll do the same on the other side and so clearly these markings should be the same on both sides and we'll see that when we attach the straps so I've got my 32 inch straps here from Cotton Webbing. You might want to make your own straps if you'd like to with fabric that matches. I just wanted to change it up a bit and it is a little bit easier just to buy the webbing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is line up the edge of the webbing on the line that I just drew coming towards the center. So I'm not doing it on this side. I'm doing it on this side, lining it up with the edge at the top. And then I will just pop a couple of pins in to secure it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it onto this side. Again, lining up the edge with the line on this side that's coming in towards the bag, not on this side, which would be coming to the edge of the bag. But we also want to make sure that it's not twisted. So just grab your strap and just run your hand around it and make sure that it's not twisted at all. And once you're happy, again, pin it, lining it up with the edges. And then what we'll do is just flip it over and do exactly the same on this side. And then we can just double check that they are sitting perfectly matched on both sides. And if your webbing or your straps do have a good side or and a bad side, Make sure that the good side is facing down onto your bag. Okay, and then once you've pinned them, you can just lift your bag up and then hold it up and just check that the straps are in the same places on both sides of the bag. And this looks great. So now we're just going to sew them down. So now what we're going to do is sew our straps on. So we're going to do this four times. And I'm going to stitch it with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to start just before the strap. And then I'm going to sew right over the top and come right off it. And then I'm going to back, reverse back over it. And then I'm going to do that a couple of times so it's really nice and secure. And I'll repeat that for the other three strap ends. So now we've finished sewing our outer part of our bag and we've got our straps on. We're going to keep it with the right sides out and then we're going to take our lining and we're going to pop our bag inside the lining and we've got the lining on the wrong sides out. So if I look inside, that's the right side and I can see my pocket in there. So I'm just going to pop my bag inside and we want the straps sitting down. We don't want to accidentally sew them into the bag. And then what we're going to do is the easiest thing to do is to find the seams on the side. So I'm going to find the seam on the side for the lining, the seam inside for the outer bag. And what I'm going to do is line them up, open them up and check I'm creating a nice line. And when I am, I'm going to pin them, making sure it's also lined up on this top edge here. And when I'm happy, I'm going to pop a pin on, on both sides. So just double checking we've got a nice straight line. And I'm just making sure I have pinned down the seams when they've been pressed open so they are sitting nicely how I press them. Then I'll go to the other side of the bag and do exactly the same thing. Find that seam on that lining and the seam on the bag. So lining up that line again, popping a pin in on either side.
Then I'm going to come to the side and I'm just going to check that my straps are tucked in there nicely and they are. I'm going to come across to a seam and I'm just going to make sure those edges are lined up really nicely and come across to my strap. So I want it to just feel like I'm lining it up. I'm not stretching either the lining or the outer bag part. I'm just smoothing it out so it's all just going to fit nicely. I'll pop a pin in on that strap. And then what I'll do is I'll come back over to the other side and find the other strap and do exactly the same thing. Pop a pin in and now I'll come into the middle. And put another pin in, or um, you might want to put two in on the middle here. And if you'd like, you could put one in between the strap and the side seam. Just put in as many pins as you'd like to keep it all in place. And then I'll do exactly the same on the other side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch around the edge here, but we do need to leave an opening so we can turn it right sides out. So what I'm going to do is this is one side of the bag here and I've got a strap here and a strap here. I'm going to start right before the second strap on this side and then I'm going to come all the way around and then when I get to the first strap on that side I'm going to stitch just after the strap and then stop and I'm going to leave this little piece here open so we can turn it right sides out and then we'll sew that shut also. So you can stitch with a half inch or a 5 8 inch seam allowance whatever you chose to do in the beginning. And I will do a back stitch because sometimes it does pull when you try and turn it right sides out again. Okay, so I'm coming back up to that strap. So I'm just going to stitch right over the other side of the strap I will do a back stitch and just take your time with this if you can see that some of the edges are not lined up just pause make sure your needles down and just adjust as you go okay now this is the fun part let's remove that last pin and now let's turn it right sides out so finding our opening remembering it's between our two straps putting your hand in and grabbing the bag and pulling it out it can be a bit fiddly there we go and then oh, pushing that lining back inside And just getting it sitting all nicely and now you can really see our bag is coming together let's give it a press so now what we're going to do is press these seams so they're sitting really nicely and what we do is here I'll find a bit where it's quite bad you can see here where the linings poking out so that's not sitting great at all so what I'll do is I'll roll it down so that it's sitting really nicely. We basically want it, if anything, the outer side showing more than the lining. So just roll it and get it to sit really nice. And then what we'll do is we'll give it a press so it will stay that way before we sew it. Okay, so this is a little bit fiddly, so just take your time with this. So that first bit that I've rolled out and it's sitting really nicely. I'll give it a press. Okay. 
And now what I'll do is I'm going to go around the whole edge of the bag and do that. And this, this is something just really take your time. Like you're re we're really on the home stretch. Don't rush this because it's just these final details that really will make or break your bag and give it that really professional look. Well, I'm all over the place here. So you can see here, if I just sewed it as it was, I'd have a big crease inside. So again, we're just rolling that out. And when we're happy, just pressing. Okay, and then when we come to our opening, let's just get it sitting really nice and flat. And what we want to do is we want to press it. So those edges are sitting at about half an inch inside the bag and creating a nice straight line as if this opening was never here. Okay, and then once you think you've got it right, give that a press. And we can check it on the inside too. Also give it a press on the inside. Now let's sew around that edge, closing off our opening and finishing up our bag. So now I'm just going to come to my opening and pin it shut. Lining up the two folds where we pressed it so it's going to sit really nicely once we sew it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start over here on my seam. So we're not drawing any attention to where we left the opening. And I'm going to stitch around the whole edge doing a top stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I've just come right back to where I started. I will do a back stitch so it's nice and secure. Trim the threads. And now we've finished our tote bag. Isn't that cute? So there we have my super cute summer tote bag, if I do say so myself. Now don't forget you can customize it however you want. You might want to have more pockets. You might want to make the strap shorter or longer. I do tend to like really long straps. You might also want to make it bigger. Now, I don't recommend using directional fabric if you do want to go much bigger because you will have to buy a lot more. And for the lining, I also don't recommend directional fabric because you'll just need to buy double the amount because of the pocket. So do have fun with it and leave a comment and let me know if you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them, please like, subscribe and leave a comment.